Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. We are going through Deuteronomy now, and we're in chapter 19, where I, I broke this up into two sessions, where yesterday I talked about the cities of refuge and how it's a picture of our salvation. Today I want to talk about purging the evil from among you. It, it, that's the phrase. And that phrase has been used throughout Deuteronomy here, but then it's also, it was used just yesterday too, okay? And it's it'll be used uh, today where there was the constant purge of the evil from among you. They were going into a land that was evil, and um, God was saying, you need to get rid of the evil. Um, don't adopt the practices of that land, and your sinful ways don't bring those, uh, you need to get rid of those sinful ways, so those evil ways. So purge that uh, evil from you so that you have, you know, a godly lifestyle. So this is uh, today talking about witnesses. All right, so let me read here today. This is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 19, and it's verses 15 to 21. All right, it says this. One witness is not enough to convict anyone accused of any crime or offense that they may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. This is a huge law that played out throughout the Old Testament. You saw different places where it played out. All the way through the New Testament and dealing with Jesus and Jesus on trial and stuff like that and you saw how um, the it was it's not it's funny but not ha ha funny but how the um, there was false witness given about Jesus but the guys couldn't agree um, the guys given the false witness couldn't agree on what they were witnessing okay so they were making up lies and they couldn't agree on the lies so um, it, it <laughs> It showed how um, illegal, really, uh, the trial of Jesus was. Uh, but uh, let's move on here. Verse 16. If a malicious witness takes the stand to accuse someone of a crime, the two people involved in the dispute must stand in the presence of the Lord before the priests and the judges who are in office at the time. The judges must make a thorough investigation, and if the witness proves to be a liar, giving false testimony against a fellow Israelite, then do to the false witness as the witness intended to do to the other party. You must purge the evil from among you. The rest of the people will hear of this and be afraid, and never again will such an evil thing be done among you. Show no pity, uh, show no pity. Life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Okay, that last uh, verse there, we're going to uh, go over that here in a little bit. But I wanted to talk about the witnesses here that you had to have, first of all, you had to have two witnesses, okay? But then if you had someone who was malicious and wanting to, to give a false witness, um, they, they were in for some serious hurt, okay? So let's say you had someone, um, someone, uh, let's say I, I'm uh, accused of a crime, I'm accused of um, stealing, okay? And stealing uh, someone's car okay so I you know the, the false witness would come and I didn't, didn't steal the car um, I wasn't even near the car but a false witness comes and says hey this guy who was um, and, and the, the punishment for that is five years in prison okay for stealing a car so now obviously there was no cars back then there was no five years in prison and so forth but um, if a person is accusing me of stealing that car and, um, and, th and then he comes and we go on, on trial and they find out that this guy was, is a liar, you know, um, eight different facts come out that show I wasn't near the car, I had never been in the car, don't know how to drive a car, all this stuff uh, plays into it. And so what happens to hit him then, because he's the false witness and he has done this maliciously, um, I, I'm set free to go. Okay, but he now receives my punishment, even though he, he, did, he did nothing wrong and he just lied. But now, and, and a lie would be like, you know, two days in jail or something like that. But because he uh, lied and, and gave this false witness, now he has to go to prison for five years. Like I should have gone to prison for five years um, if I had stolen the car, but I didn't steal the car and he just lied about it. So now he has to... Uh, be in prison for five years uh, because of that okay so what happens then is, is this if 
you're going to have people thinking twice about giving false witness because they know, oh, great, if I lie about this, I'm going to receive the punishment that guy deserves. So especially when dealing with capital, uh, capital punishment cases where it's execution, you don't want to risk uh, being executed because they caught you in a lie. Okay. But, um, and so that's what, and so God is given all this, laying all this out to purge the evil from among you. Okay. So hopefully people would learn and go and think twice about, you know, giving a false uh, witness and so forth. And then, and receiving the crime that was much harder, receiving the um, reward, you would say, punishment, um, that was much harsher because they did that, okay? And that would make them think twice, okay? Now, let's go on uh, to verse 21 where it says, Show no pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Okay, this is a, it was a principle started back then because when you... What happens is, let's say I get in a, a, a fight with somebody. It starts out innocent, where someone punches me on the arm and say, hey, how you doing? You know, and they, they punch me in the arm and, uh, you know, lightly kind of jesting. And I go, oh, not, not too bad. And I punch them in the arm because, uh, you know, when he did that to me, it, it, it kind of hurt. And so I punch him. Do I do it the same way? No, I actually do it a little harder, you know, to get to really get at him. And um, so I punch him harder and uh, he's like, oh man, oh wow. And he goes, then the next time he comes, he's punching me, not in the same way, but he's punching me harder, okay? And, and so pretty soon it turns into this big old fist fight uh, because you're, you're wanting to punch harder each time, okay? And, and it escalates, okay? And all kinds of things uh, like that, where you, you want to avoid this escalation. And that's why you had this whole eye for eye, tooth for tooth thing. Okay, and then also with the, the, the to make it uh, fair and equitable too. So if someone steals, you know, uh, let's say I'm raising goats and I have a, someone, a neighbor steals uh, one of my goats. And um, so what they needed to do if they got caught was replace my goat. And then they also had to, you know, uh, give a little extra because of that, of the loss of that. But they weren't, well, let's say the guy goes, oh man, I'm sorry I stole your goat, so here's a cat um, that I have to replace it. Like, but I don't want a cat. I didn't need a cat. Um, I never did want a cat. And why are you giving me a cat in replacement for the goat? That's not, not fair, okay? And so you have that um, equ equity also with that equality happening there. So that is why that is given, okay? Um, but let's go back to the, to the whole reason this is is laid out here it's to purge the evil from among you and we we're called to do that today to live a holy life um, and to to get rid of the evil from you and I, we've spent several episodes talking about this you know getting rid get rid of everything demonic and false and, and everything so that we're focused totally on God and not having all this other garbage okay so anyway um, let me pray with you Lord God, I thank you for this time we can be together, and I pray that you guide us, walk with us, help us to purge the evil from our lives, and that we would be totally devoted to you and follow you in the way that we should go. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I want to thank you for watching. I am a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you next time as we continue our journey. We're actually, look at this, going to turn the page into chapter 20, and it looks like some good stuff there. All right, Lord's blessing to you. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.